Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome back to another episode in this series called Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained. In this episode of the series, we're going to be taking a look at the noise and grain video effects folder. So to begin, we're going to take a look at the first two. These are going to be how to remove noise and scratches and dust. And the last four are different ways to add noise for texture or creative effect. So the first one, dust and scratches, if I apply it onto this clip, is just aiming to remove dust or noise and scratch type of images by taking a look at the different pixels and trying to make them more similar to the ones around them. So if I increase the radius, you'll see things kind of get a little bit more blurry. If I just maybe do a couple pixels, it might help in certain cases. Perhaps you shot in low light and there was a lot of noise. But if you see, if you increase it way too much, it starts to get almost this painting type of paintbrush effect. This is one of those cases where I'd say either just try to do it as best as you can in camera with good lighting and good exposure settings, or don't worry about a little bit of noise too much when it comes to just a little bit of noise on a shot like this. So the next one is median, and you'll see the parentheses legacy around it. That just refers to that this is an older feature or an older way of doing something, perhaps from an older version, or just something that's been replaced by a newer plugin or add-on. But it's still here, so median is kind of similar to dust and scratches, but instead it takes a look at different contrasting pixels and tries to make them the average median of the ones around them. So if I increase it a little bit, you'll see we'll get the same little blur type of effect. Now the next four are all gonna be ways to add noise. So you have noise, noise alpha, HLS, and HLS auto. The first one, just noise, is a pretty standard way to add noise onto your image. If I increase the percentage, it'll just get stronger and stronger. And I can choose to use color noise or non-color noise. You'll see a slight difference in the red, green, blueness or just black and whiteness of the noise. And you can also clip the value results and that'll give you a different image whether you're clipping it or not. So this is animated noise, you'll see when you press play, it's like fuzzy animation, and it can come in handy for all types of old or distorted effects, or even if you're compositing different type of text and objects together and you want to blend it together with a thin film of noise, that might be another case to use it. Another idea for this is instead of just using it on a video clip, you could also use it on blank backgrounds to add texture. So here's a black video. If I add noise to that, I can just get like a little noise image which can be used as a text backdrop or something you can use it on color mats as well this can be cool for a slideshow maybe if you want to have a little bit of life to it rather than just a solid color but let's move on to some of the other ones that's the standard noise if we take a look at the noise alpha this actually allows us to make noise out of the shape of the layer so if i increase the percentage amount You'll see it gets a little bit transparent and you can start to see the layer underneath or otherwise just black. It kind of acts like the dissolve blending mode that you have. And in this example, it's actually giving a cool way to blend the two photos together with a little bit of grit and grain. You also have the option to animate this because it's not automatically animated like in the noise one. In this case, you'd have to use keyframes and animate the random seed to different angle amounts. So. I press play, you see, now I can animate it. You can also change the type of noise, so uniform, squared, or animation. And this will give you different types of animation and looks to the noise. So you see this is a lot more gradual. The random is a lot more like what you might be familiar with. So whenever something has alpha in it, just know that it's talking about the, the overall shape of the layer rather than the contents. Next up, we have noise HLS, which stands for noise hue, lightness, and saturation. And this allows us to apply noise or grain on any one of those one parameters. So if I just want to have hue grain, you'll see the color get distorted by noise. If I want to have lightness, you'll see we get like bright and dark noise variations. And saturation, you'll see we have brightly saturated noise and a little desaturated noise. Or you can combine the three in different ways. Also, you have the option to change the type of noise, so uniform, squared, or grain. And again, this one's not animated. If you want to animate it, you'll have to change the noise phase and add keyframes. But you can easily do that to get a slow or fast animation. 
And going along with Noise HLS, Noise HLS Auto is kind of just the same thing, except the animation is automatically applied in this case, and you just have the option to adjust the animation speed. So I can lower or increase the speed, but it's automatically animating. But you have the same options, the different type of grain, the different percentages. So I'm not sure why they didn't just kind of consolidate those into one. But that is the noise and grain folder. You can see a couple ways to try to remove noise and dust and ways to creatively add it onto a clip if you like. In the next video in this playlist, we're going to be taking a look at the obsolete video folder and seeing what these are and when and why we might want to use them and why they're still here if they're obsolete. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're not yet, and I'll see you in the next video.